everybody knows Phil. He's a character. Let's go. Ready? Come on. Phil's been with us over a decade. It's somewhere around 11 years, I think. Morning, Bobby. You see Phil and you, and you interact with Phil and you're like, yeah, this is why I do what I do. Well, I think the most remarkable thing about him is his sense of humor and his desire to make you happy by making you laugh. I can be on TV. <laughs> I know for a fact that he wants to be with his brother. He loves his brother deeply. You figure they, I guess, grew up together for 50 some 60 years. That's quite a, that's quite a relationship. And they're twins. Phil and I were born in 1935. The speculation is that he was deprived of oxygen during the birth process. That caused physical and mental shortcomings. My mom and dad had to work especially hard to help Phil get balance and to walk. I was just to understand that it was gonna be a difficult life and we all needed to be supportive and it went right in here. Phil continued to get slightly more unsteady. He, he did have seizures and that almost always involved a fall. And so that's where we began to realize we needed help. And we turned to the home of the Guiding Hands. And he, at first, didn't want to do it. When somebody goes from living with their parents and their family, and for whatever reason, can't be maintained in that environment anymore and come to, to HGH, it's really important that they feel that connection that they feel with their family. The care providers that we have are family to them. No kisses. <laughs> David has felt responsible for Phil his entire life, and one of his worries has been, if something happens to me, will Phil be okay? Bye-bye, I love you, girl. I love you. All right. It is very comforting and very and a very good feeling to know that he has a home. He's, he's where he wants to be, as long as he wants to be there. And if we didn't care, who would? <laughs>